Hey y'all, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am coming to you with another Feb Regency video. Uh, and today I thought we could talk about where to start with Lord Byron. I decided to do this Feb Regency, uh, kind of some recommendations on where to start with my three favorites of the period, which are uh, Byron, Shelley, and Keats. And so I think yesterday you saw Shelley, and so tomorrow hopefully you will see Keats. Today's video is all about Lord Byron, who I will tell you is my problematic fave of the Regency period. I really love Lord Byron, and I think I love him specifically because of his poetry and not so much because of who he was personally. I think Byron is one that, I don't know, maybe I would have gotten on with him personally if we'd had a conversation, but I don't feel like I would personally get on with him the same way that I would Keats or Shelley. Byron is an interesting case amidst uh, these three because at this point, Lord Byron probably has the most name recognition of the three, but it's not really for anything that he wrote. It's more for his personal life and just kind of the drama that he was constantly involved in. And I believe his reputation has largely overshadowed his work for a long time, so much so that when I started reading him, I really did not have high expectations at all. I really thought he was probably not going to be that great uh, if all that we remember about him is just kind of his escapades. But that is absolutely not true. Lord Byron has some incredible poetry, and he is, to be frank, my favorite poet. I think on the whole, he is probably not objectively as good as Keats or Shelley. But judging the poetry that I have read from each of them on an individual basis, my favorites do tend to come from Byron. In fact, my favorite poem of the period was written by Lord Byron. Uh, and in fact, it is one of my favorite poems of all time, one of my favorite pieces of epic poetry. And so I think Byron is an interesting case. He's an interesting one to discuss because I imagine that I'm not the only one who has walked into reading him with the expectation that either it's not going to be good or that he's not going to be serious. I think that's another side of it, is that I think most of us now know that Lord Byron wrote some pretty funny poetry. And so we go in expecting there to be a level of satire or humor to most of his poems. And he actually did write some pretty incredible dramatic poetry. The humorous stuff comes from later in Byron's career, but earlier on he was very, very serious. And those tend to be my favorites. I think I will change opinion on Byron as I move forward in his career, because I am trying to read the romantics chronologically. And I have essentially put off reading much more from Lord Byron, because I know I'm about to get into the big epic satire pieces. To tell you where I started, I started with something called English Bards and Scotch Reviewers, uh, which is actually the first poem that is in this massive collection from Oxford. And it is not quoted in completion. You don't get the full English Bards and Scotch Reviewers in this massive Oxford collection because they do in fact include Don Juan in its entirety, which is incredible. But English Bards and Scotch Reviewers is, I'm going to say, probably not the ideal place to start because this is Lord Byron railing against a bunch of reviewers uh, very, very early on in his career when he had released his first poetry collection. And it was pretty much widely slammed in reviews of the period. And so he wrote this in response, basically saying that these reviewers don't know anything. And so there's a lot of name dropping. He name drops a lot of reviewers who were working during the period, but he also name drops a lot of previous poets from recent generations who also went through periods of massive critique of their work, but then of course went on to massive success. This is really funny. And in parts, I think it's probably unintentionally funny, which I think plays better for me than outright satire. So this is one that I really enjoyed and it really opened me up to Lord Byron. It made me feel comfortable with him and it made me look forward to what else I had to read from him. But if I think back on it, this is probably not the best place to start. This is not where I would recommend you start. My strategy from the beginning was to read everyone in chronological order. And this is one of the first things that Byron wrote. But in this Oxford collection, it was only quoted in part, so it's actually part of a much longer poem. And you will find that that is kind of a trend for Lord Byron. Lord Byron favors longer poetry. Uh, and that does not make it ideal for a beginner. 
because I think when you're starting out with someone, you should probably just start with something a little bit shorter to see if you even like their style. When thinking of the most famous of Lord Byron's poems, one that is relatively famous, probably his most famous, uh, is She Walks in Beauty. And I think this is an ideal place to start because it is very, very short. This one is one of his most famous, and I think it is one that is frequently studied in schools. This is an ideal place to start because I think it is one of his more genuine poems, and I think it's very romantic. It's wonderful to read at this time of year here at Valentine's Day if you're searching for something that's a little bit uh, more heavy on the romance. I really love Lord Byron because I tend to like the meter that he writes in, and he also tends to really like a rhyme, which is something that I also really enjoy. I think in a lot of cases, these are the most famous poems for a reason. Uh, and so I definitely think this is a great place to start. Also on the shorter side and among the most famous of his poems is When We Two Parted, which is kind of a more sad poem about lovers separating. And I think this is another ideal place to start because it is shorter than the majority of the things that he wrote. And I think it gives a nice contrast to She Walks in Beauty. I think that they pair together very well. She Walks in Beauty is kind of the start of a relationship. When We Two Parted is kind of the end of a relationship. And I think it shows that Lord Byron can be quite serious and that he can write really, really beautifully when he wants to. These are two of my favorites. I really enjoy Lord Byron. There's nothing I've read by him that I would say isn't good or isn't enjoyable. And these two are really, really fun to read at the same time as being deep and introspective. I think Lord Byron stands apart from Keats and Shelley for a wide variety of reasons. All three of them are very different and they're doing very different things. But I think we go into Lord Byron with the knowledge of his personal life. And so I think we expect something from him that's maybe a little bit lower brow. And I think that's great because I think it means Lord Byron is a little bit more approachable than Keats or Shelley is. And so sometimes I feel like Keats and Shelley, I'm reading this, I have to analyze, I have to take a lot of notes, I have to be tabbing, I have to be doing research on the side to understand what they're saying. With Lord Byron a lot of the time, you're just having a great time reading him. And so I think that's really refreshing. That's why I really, really love him. You'll find a lot of people who are really into poetry don't tend to like Byron. I don't really get why, but I do think that's part of it. The perception of him as someone who is more approachable and maybe not as technically complex as his contemporaries. But I personally think that's great. And that means he's an ideal place to start. And if you've never read anyone from the Romantics, I think Byron himself is a great gateway drug. She Walks in Beauty and When We Two Parted are some of the greatest places to start for him, especially in that regard. But Byron is more widely known for longer form poetry. So he has a couple of things that qualify as epic poetry. One of these is Child Harold's Pilgrimage. And believe it or not, Child Harold's Pilgrimage was the second thing from Lord Byron that I read. It is very, very long and it took me an incredibly long time to get through it because this is very contrary to what I just said, but I literally had to take notes on this on every page. I was underlining, I was tabbing. This one truly blew me away and this is my favorite of his. This is one of my favorite poems of all time. It is my favorite from this period. Child Harold's Pilgrimage is an epic poem that is in four cantos. It's about a main character named Harold, who's kind of going through some trials and tribulations. Harold is kind of semi-autobiographical for Lord Byron, so he is a bit of a Byronic hero. Uh, and the first two cantos are more personal to this character. The second two cantos are more about Byron going on travels and wanting to kind of record his thoughts on places like Italy and Greece. And those two cantos are some of the greatest poetry that has ever been written. And I am truly shocked that no one talks about it more. Exquisitely beautiful poetry. And to me, it is on par with Dante, Homer, any of the greats of epic poetry. And in some ways, it's better. This is his magnum opus, in my opinion. He may not have said that, but I truly think it is dreamy. Child Harold is also very emo, and so it like taps into kind of your inner teenager in a very interesting way. This is very approachable for long form poetry. I tend to prefer an epic poem to something very short anyway, but I think this is very approachable to be something long. And so do I think you could start here? 
Absolutely you could. And I think it depends entirely on what you're interested in entirely on what you want to get out of this because I think this is a supremely romantic poem and I think it's interesting because there is definitely a level of characterization in it which is unique for epic poetry and I think a lot of times you go into poetry thinking this is just about the language this is just about the verse about the themes, but you don't expect great character work. I think you do get interesting character work with Harold. It may sound strange that I would recommend this knowing how long it is, but I do genuinely think you could start here. If you are someone who likes long form poetry anyway, definitely start here. And this is, in my opinion, his best work. So if you are wanting to read something that you think is the best of the best, the best he has to offer, that's this, in my opinion. Also in terms of long form epic poetry, we have Don Juan. And yes, we are supposed to pronounce it like that apparently because Lord Byron said to pronounce it like that. But Don Juan is a satire. And I would say it's probably one of his more famous poems, if not his most famous. And so this is a take on the legend of Don Juan, the Spanish legend of Don Juan. But it kind of turns it on its head because the legend of Don Juan says that Don Juan is kind of a womanizer. In Don Juan, he is just someone who's kind of weak for women. He'll do anything that women want. And so that's kind of funny and it kind of twists the legend on its head. This is outright hilarious. I have never read Don Juan to completion because it is extremely long. And thus, I think it is not an ideal place to start. I think it's probably something that you should read further on into your journey with Lord Byron. I think you should read some shorter stuff and even some of his longer stuff before you jump into this one. I feel like Byron himself would probably call this his magnum opus. He would probably say this is his best. And it's certainly one of the most famous, but I don't think it's great for a beginner to poetry or a beginner to Byron. This is probably the most iconically Byron in that it is really funny. It's satire. He's very tongue in cheek. He's poking fun at a lot of stuff. And I think that's what we expect from Byron, from what we know of him personally. And so this does feel very iconically him. I just don't think it's a great place to start because of its length. Byron, akin to Shelley, also wrote plays that were never really intended to be put on. They're just ways for Byron to show off what he can do with verse. My favorite of these is Cain, which is Byron's take on the story of Cain and Abel. And it is dreamy, it is decadent. It's very interesting from a religious sense. I think this is something we don't talk about a lot in terms of the Regency or the Romantic period is just the conversation around religion that was going on. Byron's thoughts are interesting because I'm pretty sure Byron was an atheist. And so this play is interesting in and of itself. I think it's one you could start with. It is lesser known. There's probably a reason for that. Uh, but you also have Manfred, which is a play as well. I have not yet read Manfred, so I don't feel like I can recommend it, but I definitely can recommend Kane. I think Kane is really enjoyable and I think it's very interesting thematically. If you want to start with one of the plays, I think you could start with Kane very easily. And also akin to Shelley and Keats, Byron wrote quite a bit of prose. And I think if you were really interested in Byron, I think part of you is just really interested in him as a person. And so I definitely would recommend if you want to start somewhere with Byron's prose, I would read a collection of his letters. He's really funny. He's really cheeky. He is exactly what you expect him to be. And I think his letters are enjoyable. He has a lot uh, where he just talks about what he's currently reading. He comments on literature of the day. He's always very bluntly honest, which I think is enjoyable to read. And again, I think is just iconically him. Byron is one of those people that we've heard about all of our lives, and he is actually exactly like what you've heard. He lives up to his reputation, let's say. And so I think it's really interesting to read his letters. I think that's a great place to start if you were interested in his prose. And for my money, this collection of his poetry, which also binds up some of his letters, this is really it. This is a bang up edition. It has everything you want, including Don Juan in its entirety, which is very, very hard to find, but it's not a complete collection of his poetry. I personally really love uh, a poem that he wrote called The Prophecy of Dante. That's not included in here. And there are several things like that that are not included in this edition. They had to make sacrifices in order to include Don Juan in its entirety. But I think this is a really valuable edition to have.
So that's where I think you should start with Lord Byron. Of course, you could start in many different places. Uh, and I think there's a reason that the most famous works of his are the most famous works of his. And so I think if you've heard of it, you can probably go in and you're guaranteed a pretty great time because this is Lord Byron after all. I would love to know if you have read any of these. I would love to know where you started with Lord Byron, but that's going to be all from me today. I hope you're all having a great week. Happy reading. Goodbye.